Good day, grade 10s. In this lesson, which is our final lesson on exponents, we are going to look at solving exponential equations for x. So let's start with a fairly simple question. We've got 2 to the x is equal to 0 to the equal to 0.125. So if you look at this, it looks a bit scary, but if we had to change this into a fraction, we could maybe make it a little bit easier for us to understand. So that 2 to the x could be rewritten as 125 over 1,000. 125 over 1,000. And if you divide 125 into 1,000, you will find it goes 8 times. So this, in fact, is 2 to the x is 1 over 8. Now remember, we spoke about the fact in the previous couple of lessons that whenever we want to talk about exponents, we need to have the same base. And you can see that the base on the left hand side is 2, so we obviously need to get the base on the right hand side to be 2 as well. So how do we get 8 to be a base of 2? Well, we know that 2 to the x is equal to, and if we look at this, this is 1 over 2 cubed. 1 over 2 cubed, okay? So this is almost the same, almost the same, except this is 2 to the x, and this is 1 over 2 cubed. So we now need to write them this, so it looks very similar to that. In fact, it has to be the same. So we've got 2 to the x, and how do we bring 2 to the top? We bring 2 to the top by making it 2 to the minus 3, because the rule that minus means 1 over 2 to the whatever that power is there. And since these now are each one single number and they're the same bases, we can drop the bases and we can see that x is equal to minus 3. Right, so therefore we know that 2 to the minus 3 is equal to 0.125. Right, let's try another example. Okay, so this one is exactly the same principle, except it's got this funny number here, 2 in the front, it's a coefficient of 2. So we want to get rid of it. Whenever we're solving for x's, what do we do? We try and isolate the x's. So what are we going to do? We're going to divide both of these sides by 2. Right, so if we do that, we can see that this cancels with that, and you've got x to the power of 3 over 2 is going to equal to 27. Now, just as much in the simplification of the previous video, we said we needed to get the prime factors. Now, one of the ways that we can get prime factors is we can draw a little table like this, and we can say, okay, 27. What is the smallest prime number that can go into 27? And the smallest prime number that can go into 27 is 3. 3 goes into 27 nine times. Now if we try that again, what is the smallest prime number that can go into 9? And we know that that's 3 as well. And 3 goes into 9 3 times. And what is the smallest prime number that can go to 3? Is 1. So we know that 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So you may already have known that 27 was 3 cubed, but now you know how we could work it out if it was something really scary like 54 or something weird. Okay, so we can rewrite this as x to the 3 over 2 is equal to 3 cubed. Right, now we need to get rid of this. Now later on when you're in grade 12 or so, they'll probably teach you a little bit about logs, but there's a very easy way to get rid of this and that is to multiply it by the power of its inverse. So in other words, if I go x to the 3 over 2, which is what it is, and I times this by 2 over 3, what does that become? Do you see that that becomes 2 cancels the 2 and the 3 cancels the 3 and what are we left with? We've got x to the left with x to the power of 1. But we can't just do that with one side and not do it to the other side of the equation. So we got 3 to the 3 all to the power of 2 over 3. Now remember there's an implied 1 here, so we cancel those and what are we left with? We left with 3 squared, so it's 3 squared. So what is x? x in this case is equal to 9. Right, 
good. Let's do another example. Okay, so this is again a very similar one to the previous one, except that in the previous one, do you see we only had a little number here, 3 over 2, whereas yeah, we've got a little expression of 2x minus 3. But it's fine, we're just going to take it baby steps and we'll see how we do. So first of all, what are we going to do? We don't like this 3 in front, so we're going to divide both the front, both of the sides by the 3. Okay, so what are we left with? We're left with 9 to the 2x minus 3 equals 3 goes into 8 twice, remain at 2, 3 goes into 21 7 times, or you could have just used your calculator and gone 81 divided by 3 is 27. Right, then again, now what are we going to do? We need to get these to be the same bases, and we're again going to try for our prime factors. But this is a little bit easier because we know that 3 goes into 9 and 3 goes into 27. So we know that this becomes 3 squared all to the power of 2x minus 3 and from the previous example we know that 27 is just 3 cubed. Ah, so do you see here we've got the same bases but we can't drop the bases yet because we need to fix this multiplication that we have to do here. So this becomes 3. 2 times 2 is 4x. 2 times minus 3 is minus 6 is equal to 3 to the 3 and now we've got exactly the same bases on both sides so what can we do? We can drop them and we've got 4x minus 6 equals 3 so 4x is equal to 9 so x is just 9 over 4 and that is the answer to this question. Not too bad, hey? Let's try something slightly different. Uh, now do you see that now we've got actually two whole terms so we've got 2 to the x plus 1 minus 2 to the x equals 16. And again, I'm seeing that I've got a 2 to the x here and I've got a 2 to the x here, but I've got this silly 1. So what I'm going to do is try and separate this out. I'm not going to try, I'm going to do. I'm going to separate this out. So I'm going to make it 2 to the x times by 2 to the 1. I'm just writing it now so you know where that comes from. Minus 2 to the x is equal to 16, All right? Now I'm going to take out a common factor of 2 to the x. So we take out a common factor of 2 to the x and what are we left with? We've left with 2 to the 1 which is just 2 minus 1 is equal to 16. 2 minus 1 is just 1 so it's very easy. It's 2 to the x is equal to 16. Now again we need to get this into its prime factors and I'm going to use the method I showed you earlier just to show what I was doing and to remind you. So again, we've got 16 over here. Smallest prime number that can go into it is 2. 2 goes into 16 8 times. We do it again. 2 goes into 8 4 times. We do it again. 2 goes into 4 how many times? Twice. Last time, 2 goes into 2 once. So do you agree we've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 or for the great tens, 2 to the power of 4 is 2 to the x because that is the same as that. Therefore, same bases, drop the bases, x is equal to 4. Okay, so do you see that that wasn't as scary as it looked originally? You just need to remember that as soon as you've got a minus or a plus, in other words, as soon as you've got more than one term, you need to first start looking at factorizing. So you need to start looking at how we can make this into one whole term. So in this case, we took out a common factor. Let's do another example. Okay, so now, again, do we see that we've got not just a fraction here, but we've got this thing here which has got a plus sign between. So I'm looking to see if I can maybe get a common factor. So again, I'm going to break this up. Okay, so we've got 3 to the x times by 3 to the 1, plus 3 to the x times by 3 to the minus 1 is equal to 10 over 9. So do you see I can take out the common factor of 3 to the x? So we've got 3 to the x and what are we left with? 3 to the x into this leaves you with just 3 to the 1 plus 3 to the x goes into this and leaves you with 3 to the minus 1 is equal to 10 over 9. Okay, now I really shouldn't be writing the 3 to 1 anymore but I was just doing it so you could see where it was coming from. Now what we've got? We've got 3 to the x 3 plus a third is equal to 10 over 
9. Now because this is a fraction, I'm going to change this into a compact fraction as well. So 3 plus, if we make that over 1, we've got a common denominator of 3. 3 times 1 is 3, times by 3 is, I mean, times, sorry, three, 1 goes into 3, 3 times, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1, because 3 into 3 is 1, 1 times 1 is 1, is equal to 10 over 9. Ooh, so do you see that this now is 3 to the x, and that becomes 10 over 3 is equal to 10 over 9. Now, I've done this really slowly, lots of steps, so I'm going to carry on on the, the right-hand side here. Obviously, you, when you get more fair with this, could actually skip a few steps. So what do we got? We've got 3 to the x. Now we're going to take this number and take it to the other side. And this is multiplied, so when we take it to the other side, we're dividing. So it becomes 10 over 9 divided by 10 over 3. But what do we do when we divide? When we divide, we tip in times. So we've got 10 over 9 times by 3 over 10 which is awesome because then we can cancel these and that is 3 to the x still and this 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 9 3 times okay so then this becomes 1 over 3 again how do we write this? We want this to look the same so for it to both have the same base this becomes 3 to the minus 1 and that's 3 to the x. So then because they've got the same bases, we can cancel, and we've got x equals minus 1. Okay, so a little bit more of a complicated version, but again, as soon as you've seen a plus sign in between, or we've got more than one term on the side, or either side, you need to start looking at factorizing, bringing the x's together, separating out the other numbers, and then solving. Let's look at another example. Okay, I do not want you to panic. I want you to look at this and see that you've got 3 to the 2x minus 4 to the times by 3 to the x plus 3. But I'm going to show you a little trick with this as well. Let us let, I don't know, k equal 3 to the x. Okay. Then what would k squared be? k squared would be 3 to the x all squared, which is the same as 3 to the 2x. So do you see that I could actually write this as k squared minus 4 times by k plus 3 equals naught, And then it becomes really easy because then it's just a trinomial where we've got k in the front of both our brackets. Both the signs are the same and they're both minus. And then the factors of 3 are 3 and 1. So therefore we've got k equals 3 or k equals 1. But we haven't solved for this because we actually need to solve for x. So now we have to, and by the way, this method is called, wait for it, k substitution method. The k substitution method. I don't know why we always use k's. It just happens that we always tend to use k's. I think it's because it's a, a letter that's not often used with variables in science and maths. So we use it. Okay, so now do we see that we let k equal 3 to the x? So therefore we need to replace it back into here. Yeah, we substitute. So you've got 3 to the x equals 3 or 3 to the x equals 1. Now remember that 3 here just means it's implied 1 here, so then we can drop the bases, and then obviously x is 1, or, or anything to the what gives you 1. Obviously that has to be 0, so therefore x is 0. So if you see something like this where you've got three terms and you've got a 3 to the x and then a 3 to the 2x, you're looking at a trinomial or a quadratic, whichever you prefer to call it, but you're looking at factorizing that. Okay, let's do another example. Right, now this time we've got 4 to the x plus 4 to the 2x minus 32. And again, you're thinking, hmm, not so sure, but do you see that we've got this 2 to the x here? So let's now get this into its prime factors. So if we did that, we'd get 2 squared to the power of x plus 4 times 2 to the x minus 32 equals 0. So then we've got 
2 to the 2x plus 4 times 2 to the x minus 32 equals 0. And again, now you can see that actually we've got exactly the same thing. We've got a trinomial or quadratic. So again, we're going to use k substitution. We're going to let k equal 2 to the x. Therefore, k squared would be 2 to the x squared, which is 2 to the 2x. So now we can replace this with k squared plus 4k minus 32 equals 0. We can factorize this. That's k and k. The, they're different signs. There's one that's a minus and one's a plus, but we want it to be plus 4. So the bigger number is going to have the plus. Factors of 32 that add up to 4 is, would be 8 and 4. We could add say 8 minus 4 is going to be 4 and 8 times 4 is 32 and that equals 0. Therefore we've got k equals 4 or k equals minus 8. But now we need to go back to this and we can see that we've got 2 to the x is 4 or 2 to the x is equal to minus 8. Ah, now pretty easy this one. This is 2 to the x is 2 squared. So therefore back, drop the bases and you've got x equals 2. But do you see that there is nothing that we can do this to the power of that's going to give us a minus 8? I mean if I get 2 to the 1 it's going to be 2. 2 squared is going to be squared. 2 cubed is going to be 8. So anything to the positive exponent is going to give me a positive number. If I have 2 to the minus 1, I've got a half. 2 to the minus 2 is equal to 1 over 2 squared, which is a quarter, which means nothing, never. Am I going to get, and we've also got, sorry I forgot to say, 2 to 0 equals 1. Nowhere can we ever get a negative number here. So this doesn't exist. That doesn't work. So therefore the only solution for this is x equals 2. Okay, right, let's do another example. Now this is a very similar example. I don't want you to freak again. We've got something that just looks a bit different. We've got x minus x to the half minus 2. But do you see that this exponent is exactly half of that exponent? So this one's slightly different but it's exactly the same method we're going to use k substitution and we're going to let k be the number in the half in the front and middle which is x to the half so therefore k squared is going to be what it's going to be x to the half squared which then becomes x to the 1 Ta -da! so then again what do we have we've got a nice trinomial or quadratic we've got k squared minus k minus 2 equals 0 We've got k, k equals 0, minus 2, plus 1, therefore k equals 2, or k equals minus 1. We know that k equals x to the half, so x to the half equals 2, or x to the half equals negative 1. We've already shown that we cannot get a negative, so that does not exist. And how do we get rid of this? What did we say we did? We multiplied by the inverse. So this becomes x to the half times by 2 over 1 is equal to 2 to the power of 2 over 1. Therefore, x is equal to 4. Okay. Right, now our grade tens. We're going to do one more. And again, you can see that this power here is the half of that power. So you can see the pattern happening here where again we've got a half of a half. So we're going to again get let k equal x to the quarter. Therefore x, oops, sorry, k squared is going to be x to the quarter squared which becomes x to the half. So again what have we got? We've got k squared plus 3k minus 18 equals 0. 
So we've got k, k equals zero. We've got a plus and a minus. We want factors of 18 that when they add up, get to be 3 or when we subtract them and when we multiply them we get to be 18 so I'm thinking 6 we can go k plus 6 and 3 because 6 minus 3 is 3 but 6 times 3 is 18 so that works therefore we've got k equals 6 or oh, negative 6 my bad or k equals 3 we know that it cannot be negative so that doesn't work so now let's have a look at this. What is k? k is x to the 4. So we've got x to the quarter equals 3. Remember again, how do we get rid of this to the power of a quarter? We multiply it by an exponent of the inverse of that exponent. And what we do to the one side, we have to do to the other side. So we cancel. So that becomes x and 3 to the 4 is 64. Let me just check that. 3 to the power of 4. Ooh, my bad. It's 81. 3 to the power of 4 is 81. I don't know why I said 64. 3 to the power of 4 is 81. Okay, so whenever you see something where this is half of that and you've got three terms, you just have it to look at the case substitution method. By the way, you don't just have to use case substitution method when you have these type of questions. You can use it any time you feel free. Feel free whenever you're feeling a little bit nervous and it looks a bit scary, you can use case substitution. But this is when it is most useful. So right, grade 10s, what I need you to do is go practice solving for x, go practice solving exponential equations and then do the questions at the end of the assessment. Have a lovely day.